Good afternoon, traders. Uh, welcome to the Bookmap uh, Pro Trader webinar series. We'll continue on with this. Uh, and um, uh, today we've got uh, Niels Koops. Uh, Niels is a professional trader, nine years of experience. Uh, he currently trades at the Amsterdam Exchange uh, and uh, trades and develops his own proprietary algos for, for quite a while now, a num number of years. Uh, and uh, he finds that Bookmap complements uh, his work uh, very nicely. Uh, and uh, shows the uh, intended order flow in relationship uh, to the executed um, uh, transactions. Uh, so I uh, need to go through the risk disclaimer. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, here you have our contact information. Uh, and then uh, there's also uh, some contact information that I will put into the chat for you. Uh, regarding uh, Niels here. So if you want to reach out to him on Twitter or his website uh, or his uh, affiliate link here as well for Bookmap. Okay. So other than that, um, I'll just uh, turn it over to Niels and uh, go at it. Yeah, thanks, uh, Bruce. Um, so we we again started with a data feed on my server and that, that didn't work again. So <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so Bruce is going to show the screen and then I'm going to comment about that. So we have to go back and forth uh, doing that. Um, so for the rest, I'm trading at uh, the exchange. Uh, well, it's just like, like an, it's not like that you're trading on the floor anymore. Of course, it's just uh, uh, several companies are trading there on the floor. Um, and I'm at one of them. Um, but it's a really nice environment. It's like still kind of like being on the floor, but it's still on the screen, right? So, so it ha it has a nice vibe. But um, but yeah, still it's, it's only screen trading there as well. Um, so Bookmap, yeah, I, I think I was one of the one of the first who like like who got it um, at the time. It's been a been a while, I guess now, right, Bruce? Um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean we've been um, you know uh, chatting back and forth for. A number of years so yeah uh, yeah uh, i think so too <laughs> um and 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 the funny thing to mention now is that we connected the, our proprietary data feed from the exchange to bookmap so we wrote an api for that or you guys wrote it by the way um, um <clears throat> i think a couple of months ago now um so i'm running that uh, as well and also to test it on on stocks as well um, but I mainly trade futures, by the way. So I mainly trade futures, uh, the DAX and the S&P. Um, we don't have Eurex data, so we're going to go over the, uh, the S&P right now. Um, yeah, and I, I just want to go through like how I uh, how I use it or what I look for, and um, yeah, how how that can help you as well. Um, yeah, let let's zoom to I guess the open will be good. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You, you can uh, keep the open uh, all the way to the left, so that we see the rest. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, what we see already is that below there are several bits in and, and being added while it's training there, right? So uh, it's, it's turning uh, uh, white or whitish. Um, and well, if we can go a for a little second to my screen, how, can we do that, Bruce? Yeah, sure. No, no problem. Here, let me uh, hand it over to you. How do we do that? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah, my screen. Um, can you see anything? <laughs> uh, yeah, I see. Uh, Security oh, yeah. and privacy there. Okay, there you go. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so uh, the open is here, 9.30 here. We got a cluster of volume. Can you see the mouse too? Is it updating quick enough? Uh, yeah, for... yeah, we see it, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's a high volume uh, node over here, and that's right at the low from, uh, well, the, the day probably. So um, that was 47, so that matches up right there. Can you guys see that, yes or no? I can see yeah. it. Yeah, we, yeah, we can see it. Great, great. So that's a point that I was interested in uh, Interested in anyway. So um, yeah, can we take it back to yours now? <clears throat> uh, yep. <laughs> so what, what's that level again? 47. 47, 47 even, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. And that was right where, like, into the bits over there at the 10 1003 or something? Yep, right there. Um, and then hold it. So, um, of course, you don't know beforehand if it's going to hold or not, but at least when you know there's previous volume and it's trading up be before the open, um, plus we had expiry, right? That, that was that was fun to watch, um, especially in the DAX, by the way. Um, but so they they likely wanted to hold it above the 250. At least that was my that was my idea with it. Um, um, so the 47 test was interesting to see if they're going to hold that or not. So and they did that test the volume and right into the bits from there, and then it yeah kind of hold it. Uh, went went uh, uh, well a little bit higher, and then we I think we had the China news then, right? Um, Is that that's then? right here. Or it it no, looks like I, I think at, I think at ten eighteen or something. I think that's yeah, the, the China. that's the okay. I I was wondering what that was. I wasn't watching the news uh, news feeds. Uh, oh, earlier, but, uh, well this... I wasn't either. And then someone shouted in the in the in, at the desk, look China. I like what? <laughs> so I I ran back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I kind of I missed that move, but um, but yeah, um, but but still, it's interesting to see that uh, because the DAX spiked up like 40 points something, and this is like two, 52, 68 points. Yeah, okay, uh, so that's that's similar. Um, but but yeah, like right into the the, the heavy offers from uh, um, 58, right? Went above there because it, it was probably stops there as well. Um, yeah. Can you, can you scroll it to the right or left of me? Sorry. <clears throat> oh, you want to you want to zoom into this area or like yeah, this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what what you can do is then like um, what I want to do is like uh, I want to switch it back to my okay screen in a bit. Um, here I'm just gonna make you. Well, no, <laughs> I think it'd be easier here if I do it. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Here. I'll just be more attentive here. There you go. Yeah. Right. So, oh, I can draw too. That's that's great. So let's do the. Can you can you guys see my screen now? Yeah. Right. So you can see all the zero prints. <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to draw. That's not working. Uh, nah, never mind. You, let's just watch the cursor if you can. Um, uh, the stops were all well. They they were one-sided buys, right? Because of the news, it's usually one-sided. Then ticks up, ticks up, ticks up. But the the volume is concentrated here, right? Before that, I think you can see that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like 52-ish. The test was also right to that point, and yeah, that's not really a coincidence, right? Um, so this test previous volume and then um, tries to go back up. Um, yeah, can we, can you take it back again? Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, uh, you know, I know, I know you, you like the footprint chart very much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is what it looks like in book map, right? Mm -hmm. Here's that, here's that cluster right here. Yeah. You know? Or, you know, that's, that's why you get these retests right to it. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, continue on. Um, it was fifty-two fifty, so that's a little bit. Um, oh, so it was actually down down here. Then what you're talking about is this. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, you're talking about this cluster down here, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th this is the difference, that, and this is what you. This is the difference that you get in, in Bookmap. Like, uh, 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 it's over time we see we see this the microstructure here. See right. exactly like uh, what you were looking at is is the um, uh, aggregate view of all of this volume within that cluster. Yeah. So uh, we we know that there's a cluster here, and this is where it sprung out from, uh, mm -hmm. and the retest come comes right back to it here. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. the first retest though was to this cluster here. Yes. Uh -huh. And sure. um, well, actually, the first retest was to this smaller cluster here, and then the breakout continued. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's the same stuff. Uh, yep. I, I just want to reiterate that because I, I do that in the, um, uh, <laughs> not to, uh, uh, you know, take your pre presentation here, uh, but this is what bookmap displays. And this is, this is an advantage is to be able to look at it, look at uh, those clusters yeah, yeah. like that. For sure. Yeah. Um, I think you can also see it in, in, in the, in the C, uh, CVP. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It also shows it 
nicely. Yeah. Um, yeah, very much so, right here. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's 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 kind of what I would use if I had only uh, had to look at bookmap. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice way to see see where the volume took off from, and where it's likely to hold because those people are off site, right? So if you were selling there, um, well, you probably want to get out the first time it gets back, uh, at least if that's your uh, view. Um, but yeah, can you can you scroll a little bit to the left again? Yeah. So so besides the fact that uh, the 52 level uh, was a previous high volume. From the breakout, you can also see that the bids are increasing at that point, right? Um, they're just starting to add a little bit more. Uh, you see little algos going on there as well. And above there, it's kind of light, right? Above the 52, 54 area, it's 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 a bit light. So it means it's likelier that it's if it's going up, that it's going to be much easier to push through. Um, and yeah, um, that's 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 a nice setup. Um, yeah, beauty. Beauty. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, s super bullish uh, news, oh, and yeah. then uh, uh, you know, then then here it is in the order book. Mm -hmm. you know? um, and uh, uh, anyway, um, f for for everybody, like uh, this is uh, this is what Niels looks at in Bookmap. You know, he's got uh, he's got the colored heat map and everything, uh, but this is the uh, this is the setup that he likes, right? He he has very extreme um, or much more extreme um, uh, settings on the uh, yeah. uh, on the cutoffs uh, Actually, on the volume. If you if you want, you can set it to high to I how I set it. Like if you go to the yeah the one and then set exact size to the lower cutoff, then put it to I think to two hundred now. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So I, I like it like filtered a lot. <laughs> yeah. So you can only see the the big ones, um, and I'm kind of still kind of playing with the different color schemes. By the way, um, like today I was using this one, and l last week I was uh, with uh, with the the yellow one, the yellow or the, or the red one, the red extreme one. Yeah, um, this is one. This is one I prefer as well. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah you, you can turn it on as well. Look, see how it looks. Um, okay. Um, so Natalia's got a question here for you. Um, let's see. Uh, so are there areas in high volume in CVP you'd like uh, to buy in those areas on the retracement? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Because usually when they're, when people are offside, um, like offside, they mean if they're wrong, right? Um, a retest of that area is likely to get a bounce, or at least some, or at least that you don't like that you're not wrong right away. Uh, there could be consolidation, sure, um, but usually it gives you uh, a bounce in that area because they're wrong and they want to buy it back if they're short and, and the other way around. Um, yeah, that's kind of how that works. So I, I always look at like what what would I do if I was shorting there and I, the news came out and the first chance I had to get out, what would I do? Well, I would get out. So yeah. Um, I I totally agree. I mean, like um, uh, you know. Uh, the the stronger moves like that uh, and then coming back to and then understanding this now in terms of how people are reacting to this area right. in in essence though this is a gift um, they're lucky it came back oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> you know because because the stronger move like usually you know it, it, it might not even come back to this one it might come back to this little cluster here and that's yeah. all you, that's all you get and maybe it comes up and test yeah, so usually a like half, halfway test is like it's common, uh, but all the way back is less common. Um, yeah, and sometimes it doesn't test it at all. So, right. Um, yeah, and then you get a squeeze. So yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Kind of is already the whole way up, of course. But um, no. Yeah. So. Um, if, if maybe um, you could uh, talk a bit about um, how you would look for entry points uh, in here. Yeah. Um, well, the end point is, is exactly what I just pointed out. Like the 52s area is exactly what I would uh, buy, and I, I I did buy it, but I did did it in the DAX um, because I was trading DAX today. I think that the level was like oh I I don't know uh, I don't have the chart for, in front of me now. I think like 16s or something in the DAX. Um, I I, I uh, not it was before that. Interesting. So, so you're you're looking at the S and P, 
um, uh, as confirmation uh, or correlation. Oh, that too. Yeah, I look at both. I mean, the same thing thing happened pretty much in the DAX, uh, of course, but um, a little bit different. But yeah, I watch the S and P as well to look for confirmation in the DAX. That all not always works, by the way. Sometimes that's really frustrating. But I think like uh, t uh, Tuesday or something, they, the DAX went down before the open, and the S and P was holding it. And I was buying it because of the the hold of the S and P and the expectation of it to go higher, and then the DAX went down. <laughs> I was like, oh no! So I almost stopped out, <laughs> and then I didn't. But at the end, I didn't make any money off it because I, I wanted to get out, and then it, then it ran up. But it, it just kind of yeah, it my, my trade wasn't good anymore. So I was too much off sides at that point. Almost stopped out, and then I, I didn't like it anymore. But um, but yeah, if I would have done it in the SP, then it would have been a great trade. But yeah, what do you do? Can't have it all. Yeah, um, uh, interesting. So I mean, sometimes the the um, uh, I mean, you 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 actually saw the um, discrepancy as as a uh, opportunity, um, and in this instance, it didn't work out. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, usually it does. So that's the thing. It's like if you can see. Um, like v volume clusters building before the open and it tests it down. Um, let me see if I can, if you can see that in my chart wall. Then um, it was not today, um, like yesterday. Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so then, but then um, the expectation is that it, they're gonna test it at least once or or go higher. Um, so if I see that, then I want to be, be long into that, right? Um, and if I see the DAX going down, I should have like when that happened, bought more <laughs> probably. But um, yeah, but the DAX can be a little bit crazy. So uh, like suddenly it was down 20 points. It was like mm, that's not a lot of fun when you're holding a few uh, DAXs. So, um, yeah. So it, it, yeah, uh, at that point I'm saying like mm, yeah, maybe not. If I can get out, I'm happy. But but it, it did work out. But um, yeah, you know, sometimes it, there's like something different in in the DAX going on. Maybe like with the with the cars lately, like if if the car uh, sector goes down, then yeah, well the DAX goes down and maybe mm -hmm. it doesn't like affect S and P that much. And then yeah, you get a different move. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that that can happen. You know, um, yeah. Um, so so uh, um, just to, just to follow up on um, uh, entry and, and trade management on this. So um, yeah. you're looking for you know the and you'll wait uh, for this move into this area here, and yeah. uh, you're not really looking too much at the order flow. You're looking for it to just test that area and then thinking that the um, other traders like like this they're waiting to get it down here. And they're they're going to uh, they're going to get out uh, immediately. So you're you're yeah. anticipating the bounce, but that the test will occur. Yeah. Um, well, I want to see some support of of, of of buyers. You know, like you see some uh, in, the, in the book. Right? Until in fifteen, the, book. the bits are like filling. Um, right. Okay. So so, so that, you that helps, of course. Yeah. Sure. So so then that's that's when you you're looking to to the heat map. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yep. Um, then, exactly. then where would you would you be really aggressive with your stop? Would you just have it a few ticks below? No, I, with the S and P right now, with this volatility, I use at uh, like at least two points. Um, yeah, otherwise it's it's really hard to to stay in. Um, yeah, like a few a few years back, then uh, with every level being like 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 at like one point five k or whatever, you know. But right now, there's only I think on average like. Two, two, three hundred on on a on a one price. Yeah, it's not much really now. Low, yeah. Really low, so it, it, it can move faster as well. So and if volatility increases, well, also your stop has to increase. Otherwise, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So, right. Um, so yeah. So yeah. so then, um, what about targets? Um, and uh, scaling in, scaling out, adding more, uh, that kind of thing. Like in, yeah. in this in this kind of move, would you take some off at the top of this little range, or would you be yep. looking for this swing, or would you be Not targeting? A, usually the first the first move up, so that's like four points. Uh, I, I scale out usually two thirds, and then uh, like and then I see for the runner what the the rest does. Okay. Um, and I think it didn't really test lower. Can you do you, do you do you bring your stop to break even at that point too, or you just let it? 
let it oh, run. Let it still. Go to minus one. Um, okay, so you move it up just a little bit. Yeah, because if they just test it and then move, then it really pisses me off. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they they like to do that a lot often. So yeah, I, mean, I try to be careful with that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, and at this point, yeah, I, I kind of probably did, yeah just let the one go, you know. Um, and then uh, when it moves above the previous scale out, then I move the stop to break even. Yeah, above that level, then I move the stop to break even. So mm -hmm. yeah, now it's break even. So and then, down, down yeah. here. Yeah. And then um, my levels on on the on the upside, I I look at the the market profile pr that I have on, and then I see if I see some resistance levels from before, and they actually got some there, like at 64, 65, and also the 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 offers offers there were pretty high. Like a sixty-five. Yep. yep. So right I wanted to get out somewhere before that, right? So yeah. Um, first, I start off with like offering just a little bit below because sometimes it flushes right to that order, like the big order. Um, but if it doesn't take that right away, then I just move it a bit lower and uh, to get a fill, and then I'm kind of happy with it. So yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. That's uh, that's what I I do as well. Like I kind of front run the the higher liquidity yeah. because. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, just higher probability of getting out. Um, yeah, exactly. I was a bit unlucky with the DAX because the, I, I was in the book. I was buying uh, 11K1, uh, and then I added 11,000, uh, was it, eight something. Um, so my, my average was great, and then it moved up, and I was like, okay, cool. And then I scaled out 16, I guess. And then it had a flush up to the 48.5, and I was in the book at 49. <laughs> wow. So I didn't fill, and I, well, that's, that was a bit unlucky because I just wanted to front run the, 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 the like the even numbers, right? The 50, 60, 70, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I didn't fill, so 49, so I just moved it to like right away to like 36.5 or something just to be done with it. Um, but still, I was lucky, of course, with the uh, with the up uh, tick. But that was before. I think it was before. I don't know the time anymore. Actually, <laughs> I did. Yeah. I had like forty trades today, so I, I don't. I don't really remember. Wow, uh, uh, yeah. forty trades. I mean, so on that. I mean, so you've got one third on still, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you've got after you've gotten this move up here um, above the swing. Uh, stop is up to break even where you yeah. entered. Uh, and uh, and fantastic entry. Um, oh, yeah, uh, lucky. It's not, it's not always perfect, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, do you scale in as well on another full? Yeah, percent? sometimes I do that. I didn't do that here um, because I, I had enough on already. Sometimes uh, when I like try small to see if it works or not, um, then I then I uh, buy um, higher when it breaks a level that I wanted to see. Uh, well, wanted to break. Um, so I wait for a little pullback, or I just buy market because I have a good average, right, from the from the entry below. Right. Um, kind, of, kind of depends on what I'm expecting. I, with the S&P, I expected before it opened, like to test 75 something, um, because it was a high volume cluster from before. So I, I was expecting like 20, 26, 75. And the DEX, I was expecting 20, 2030. I think it just hit 2038, so yeah. So that was pretty good. I, I, I unfortunately I didn't hold to that, <laughs> but yeah, what do you do? Um, right. And, yeah. and so, um, you know, I mean, uh, it's um, invaluable to to hear, um, you know, your process of uh, you know uh, entry trade management, uh, etc. Also, the way that you're using and looking at Bookmap, uh, using the book. Uh, mm -hmm. Combined with your other trading methods like uh, volume profile and footprint uh, yeah. together, um, the um, uh, oh, what was I going to say about the? Uh, um, you can still see the algo, by the way. You know <laughs> the 250 lot. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, the um, and then much, I mean, much much higher time frame stuff here. You you know you're also kind of integrating. Uh, but yeah. then looking very specifically at the book at some of these areas, yeah. Um, would you chase um, when you, you know, you know this is bullish news uh, mm -hmm. from China, um, and uh, would you, uh, you know, see this if, let's say you didn't get filled down here, yeah. mm -hmm. 
uh, would you would you jump in like with a market buy in some of these areas, or would you not? Yeah, I, I tend not to do that um, because usually when I do, it, it just down ticks right away. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, that's what I do. Okay, so um, you would miss you would miss the move and look just look for the next opportunity. Yeah, kind of. I might try it on a little pullback, like till uh, till the. Well, you have a little cluster, right, at, at 54 ish, 55, I think. Yeah. So I, I might like, yeah, there, yeah, that yeah. point. Yeah. I, yeah. Might, I might check like there, like where it broke off from, broke out from. Um, but probably, uh, to be honest, I would miss it. Yeah. Yeah. And but, just to just to give like you know people a, a kind of an an idea, uh, you know, from a professional trader, mm -hmm. like how often does that happen to you? What do you mean? Like it, you miss it. But I admit, oh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, it happens a lot. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, um, sometimes I do chase it, and then I like, I like, oh no, why did I do that? Because when you do that, when you when you're chasing the DAX, because I, when, when Europe open is open, I use the trade DAX. Oh, you, you're gonna pay. <laughs> <laughs> when you're chasing the DAX, it's like you're usually buying the high, and then it's down 10 points before you know it and um i don't know if you you know you guys know know how the dax uh uh trades but 10 points is 250 euros um and it happens in a heartbeat um, yeah. yeah 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 like it in in, in in a few seconds really sometimes yeah um yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so i try not to do that I, I mean of course i did that i mean i made all the mistakes you guys have made or are gonna make, um, yeah, sure, yeah. But yeah, it's just really important thing. I mean, like uh, to to uh, uh, understand, like you know, from uh, from your pro professional perspective, you know, you um, are looking for something specific. If it yeah. doesn't happen, um, you know, you you uh, you let it go and look for the next one. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least I try to let it go. You know, I'm also human, so I'm sometimes I just go for it and try it anyway. <laughs> um, but in reality, that usually costs money. So yeah, you know, try to not do that that often, um, and you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, I, I've got some questions coming in here for you. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, Gregory, I'll get I'll get back to your maybe your question uh, next week if you don't mind. Uh, this will uh, continue on with. Uh, 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 things here or questions here for uh, for Niels. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Can you go to current time to see what levels uh, and nodes? Okay, Scott, we'll do that in a second here. Um, are you taking one or multiple? Uh, mar are you trading one or multiple markets at the same time? Steve is asking. Oh, usually I concentrate on one, like or either ES or or DAX. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that answers it's your time, question. I question. also look at I also look at Nasdaq. Um, it, it kind of depends on where where the the best setup is forming. Um, right. right. Usually, I, I stick to one. Yeah, it's enough to look at. So yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, uh, let's uh, uh, maybe uh, get to uh, Scott's question here about the current market uh, mm -hmm. and any sort of uh, anything that you're looking for here. Uh, and he's actually um, talking about. Uh, uh, high volume nodes and spoof uh, spoofing, and how how you might be uh, looking at the at the market here at, at in, in the current current environment. Right now. Yeah, yeah, more uh, or less. Well, the seventy five level tested that I uh, was talking about. So I think it could be over, right? And um, before the market opened, I saw already in the book because with rhythmic you have unlimited depth, right? So twenty six twenty six eighty had some high volume in the book. Uh, it still hasn't been taken out. Um, so yeah, so I would I would now like stop being on the long side. Uh, I was long the whole well, the whole day until the DAX closed. I tried to short a little bit. Um, didn't go that well, but didn't lose. So yeah, um, I had to try it. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so from now on, I, I kind of shut down. You know, like for for me, for me it's weekend already. But um, let's <laughs> let's take a look. Uh, let me look at my chart a little bit. I uh, kind of was shutting it down. Hold on. I mean, that's another just you know, you know, great perspective. Like you're looking for it to move up into 75, and you're basically you're done for the day. Like uh, yeah. that's what you you anticipated from the from the get go. Um, mm -hmm. It did it, 
and you're you don't you don't really even care uh, after that point. Like no, I don't. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that. Well, I mean, now I don't. You know, like uh, like ten years ago, something like that. I think I started like in. Uh, I think it's ten years already. But anyway, then um, yeah, I was I was looking at the market the whole time. If it came to my level, I just wanted to see it, even was if it was at night for me, you know, or whatever. Um, but, but but yeah, you also gotta keep uh, like having a life, you know. <laughs> I was trading sometimes. I was tra really trading like twenty four seven, and it's just like it, it drives you crazy. So um, stop doing that. And now it, I, I just don't care. I really don't care. Yeah. Yeah. So there's you, always another trade, like always. E even if you miss the, miss the best trade ever, the best setup, there's always another trade. Hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Really, really great. Great to great to hear. Um, the um, uh, so uh, you're you in the morning when you uh, are looking at your charts or you know whatever mm -hmm. it is, uh, you know, reading the news, whatever it is, your expectations or anticipations are. Um, you uh, outline these kinds of scenarios, and then um, yep. that's what you're looking for. Yep, yep, I did. I uh, I like I annotate my market profile chart. And then I so I annotated 2675. I was annotating well the 2650, of course, with the with the European uh, at the European open. So it was trading. I don't know where, where it was trading. It was trading lower. Uh, mm -hmm. So there was two levels that I want to keep in mind. Also with the expiry, like the the whole levels are pretty usually pretty good, like the 50, 75, the evens. Yep. Uh, so that's good with expiries. Uh, and with the DAX, I had 11060 and 11165 uh, and 11230. Well, they all hit, but yeah. Um, well, that, that was a little bit lucky, I guess. I mean, it's not always always that good um but yeah I, I just look at the previous volume like where there's high volume uh, that's going to be an area of resistance or consolidation right so it doesn't mean that it has to go down from that point but at least they're going to reconsider and check what they want to do with that and um like well i moved a lot lately right so if it moved i think it probably moved down like from that that point on like five six percent six seven percent i don't know something like that um, so if it comes all the way back to that point, well, there are going to be a lot of people like scratching their head, like, "Hey, what should we do? Uh, <laughs> do we th do we think it's going to still go to three three uh, k, or uh, maybe we should reconsider and go flat, or or just even go short?" Um, mm. So those points are always going to have a reaction, you know, like with, with high volume. Um, so if you try an area like that, even if you're offside for a little bit, it usually not always, te but, but test is test uh, is tested back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those those whole numbers. Uh, uh, extreme. I mean the high, vo the high volume numbers. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The high volume points from before, like if you look at a weekly profile or a monthly profile, um, and it, it moves away from that on the retest, uh, those levels are usually pretty good. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah, but right now, um, right now I see uh, bits coming in at 65. I see a little LVN also at 66 on the profile, but it's going. It's kind of low volume till the 57, right? So, um, oh, yeah, something, something like that. But since the 75 hit already, my bets are kind of off. Uh, that's kind of annoying to say now because there's yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, uh, that's it's it's really um, uh, you know good to know. I mean, that's what you're looking for. Now you're out, and like um, and now you know the the question here was to analyze what you currently see, but uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you you haven't even really looked at it or even considered it. Um, no, uh, I haven't. Can you like zoom it in a little bit, like uh, stretch it out to the sure. the numbers? Yeah, that one. Yes. Uh, okay. So. Hmm. Well, there's more downside pressure now, right? Because you can also see at, at the bottom, you see the delta moving down. Um, it's probably like 2K to 2-ish to 3K. So there's some sellers active. Um, and here at the retest to the 71.50, you saw some offers coming in and that 
the level kind of hold it after that as well at the, at the downtick at the 72s. Um, so I, I wouldn't be that inclined probably to uh, to go long. While I'm still, my bias is still bullish. Um, but I want to be careful at this point, you know. Um, we, we've stretched out a lot already from the lows. Um, so even though I, I think it's still like positive, I, I don't think it's going to go to the moon. Um, so mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, at this point, I don't have anything like really solid to say. I think uh, 75, yeah, 75 could still hold, you know, it could still hold. It doesn't have to per se have to go higher. But since it's Friday and it's expiry, um, yeah, I gotta give the the odds to the upside still. Um, so if sixty five holds, um, yeah, I would say we could still see seventy five or eighty at the close. Um, yeah, it's it's still kind of low as well. The volume is just pretty low, I think. I don't see. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, so if I had to guess at this point, which it all is, uh, I had to say like if 65 holds, 65, 63 holds, then I would still say, well, there's a potential of, of retesting the, the highs. Yeah. Yep. Since, it, since it's expiry and, and Friday and people are going to close out and you get margin calls if you like keep holding and we're up a lot. Um, too many shorts that need to cover, well, they're already covering, but Probably not all. Um, yeah, that that would that would be my 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 thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Great. Great to hear. Um, uh, guys, uh, get get your questions in. Um, uh, the um, uh, you know it's kind of an interview or interactive here. Uh, you know, with Niels. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Scott. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, ask away. I mean, you've got the ear of uh, you know professional trader and uh, what he looks at. Uh, and how he even, you know, gets into management here. Uh, bigger picture, uh, even smaller picture here, uh, and using, uh, uh, you know, uh, footprint as well as um, uh, volume profile uh, all together. So, uh, and then looking at the book map for the book, uh, volume and, and microstructure here. <clears throat> uh, let's see. You can see the algos canceling. You see that? They're pulling a little bit. Well, uptick, when it uptick, they cancel, and when it down ticking, they're adding. <laughs> ah, you, you mean right in this little area here? Yeah, yeah, and, and below, like the 69.50 and the 59.59 uh, okay. even. Yeah. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, they're, and they are adding more at, at higher levels in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Um, let's see here, a couple more questions. Um, so do you think that the volume on the FDAC, uh, uh, what uh, what do you think about the volume on the FDACs compared to the uh, FDXM? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the mini DACs, um, it, it just trades, it's, it's just uh, like uh, arbit arbit arbitration between the, the, the big DACs. So, um, I don't really like the the lit, the, the mini DAX um, uh, because sometimes I trade it because you, you can like scale in more, right? Um, because one one five five mini DAXs are, is one big one, um, but the fills are usually pretty bad. Um, if you really want to scalp, the minis are pretty pretty. Yeah, pretty bad fills actually. Um, so I prefer to buy the the big one um, because that's the real market. So the mini is mini is just following the big one, uh, as you know. So um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Does, does yeah. that answer your question or not really? Or yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 very much like um, uh, you know looking at the uh, the the micro. Um, uh, uh, crude oil QM, yeah. like uh, you know, it, it's a derivative of the bigger contract. It's right. not as it's thin, thinly traded. The mm -hmm. fills can be kind of odd and strange, um, yeah. but uh, it does allow you the scaling, which is nice. Um, yeah, yeah. And usually when I scale, it goes wrong, so I try not to do that. 
<laughs> I'm either right or I'm wrong, and I don't want to. I prefer not to scale in. Maybe, maybe once, but that that's it. Um, and 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 by the way, when the when the DAX had a flush up till the forty eight point five, the mini only went to forty two. So yeah, that's weird. Sometimes you have like different. Uh, I mean, it it, it was just stops, of course. Um, but but yeah. Um, it's it's a little bit different. I mean, if you don't have the capital to trade a big bond, uh, yeah, sure, go ahead and trade a mini. Um, that's fine, sure. But but it feels a little bit, little bit worse or or harder to get than on the big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes makes sense. Um, let's see here. A bunch of questions. So um, uh, let's see. Just a second here. Okay. Uh, that ticker won't show up on the on the DX feed. Oh, okay. Yeah, Richard, that's because it's Urex, um, and um, uh, you can't subscribe to uh, to Urex through through DX feed right now. Okay. Uh, I don't think though. I think you can get ICE, but you cannot get uh, Urex. Uh, um, let's see. I, I wouldn't if you if you're new. Um, probably not best idea to do that. DX. Trading the DAX. No. Yeah, uh, the but the right. margin is the margin's quite high, and and it it moves. It's very volatile, and and yeah. uh, y you know you can get slammed very very quickly. Um, yep, it's really hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very very challenging uh, uh, market to trade. Yeah. Um. Uh. So uh, let's see. SJ is asking. Um. Can you give an approximate idea of your performance, uh, average uh, annual return, drawdown, etc. Um, and I, you know, I know that's kind of personal, but like, um, uh, kind of very personal, but like, um, just, um, you know, as retail traders, like, you know, we, uh, put together studies looking for an edge, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, uh, you know, trying to, you know, uh, uh, risk capital, uh, in a way that, um, you know, takes advantage of that edge. Uh, yeah. So in terms of like drawdowns, uh, they're expected. Uh, in terms yeah. of annual return, it is expected um, uh, at a certain range. Um, so do those? Maybe you can comment on that. Like how how do you how do you look at how do you define your edge, and uh, do, do your returns kind of match that that um, uh, those, those studies? Well, the, the thing is, like I, I set my risks usually initially on uh, like one on one. Or one on one point five, um, and my my um, uh, I call that um, win rate is 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 high. So when I take a trade, it's a high chance that I'm going to win. Um, that's why I like the risk of one on one as on the DAX at least, because if you do if you use a five point stop on the DAX, well forget it. Um, you get you're going to get hit. Uh, a ten point yeah, less chance, but um, it's just really hard to do that. So, um, so first you got to make sure your win rate is high, and then you can set your uh, risk uh, um, with that. Um, so it, it kind of depends on your on your strategy, right? Yeah. If you, yeah. If, if you hold longer, if you if you aim for in the DAX, for example, or let, let's talk about ES. Most people know ES better, I guess. Um, like if you if you want to hold for ten points. Well, you also got to risk at least two, probably three, three, and more likely four to, to get ten points. You know, um, so if you if you yeah, it kind of depends. So, but if you if you just want to get two points, two three points, really quick trades. If you want to get out ASAP, uh, then you could could work with two point stops, and then your win rate like kind of has to be like 70 percent, I guess. Uh, to get a really good return, uh, and for the rest, if you if you hit that, uh, then you can scale up. You know, like then then it kind of doesn't matter at that point. Um, if 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 you got that running, then you can scale up, and if that goes well, you can scale up, and then with its futures, you know, you can scale up a lot. Um, so yeah, you got to work on that first, and then you can scale up, and then it kind of doesn't matter what you make. Um, so if you first make like five k a month uh, with uh, two lot. 
then you can make then you switch to a three lot. Um, you also get better scale out opportunities, and then you can make seven hall. Uh, and and then you maybe switch to four lot. Then you make ten k a month. Uh, and et cetera, you know, it kind of it depends on your strategy, depends on your risk management, and yeah, stuff like that. So it kind of doesn't matter uh, uh, what someone makes; it all depends on how they make it. So right, right. No, great to hear. I mean, like um, you know, for example, um, uh, in the webinars that you know we we you know do the analysis and then we look for we anticipate the move, mm -hmm. um, but we're usually we're looking at many um, kind of lower time frame examples, um, and you, even in those lower time frame examples, you'll see you know uh, where all of a sudden the order flow has shifted dramatically, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and uh, uh, going for one to one like that. Um, the way that you're trading uh, makes makes um, uh, you know a lot of sense. Uh, you're most mostly a scalper um, or day trader. Um, so yeah. so the the what I, my point is the higher time frame moves, um, you're going to have to just take more risk. Um, yeah, just just sure. like you're saying. Uh, so yeah. uh, uh, mm -hmm. I. I and for the rest, it also depends on your setup. I mean, if you're working at home, then your costs are probably probably low. Like I sit at the desk, it costs uh, to sit there is 1K a month. Then you have the systems running, it's six, 700, then stuff like that. And then you have like the fees. And so you're, to start with, you're probably down 2K to start with. So first you gotta make sure you can make that back. Uh, and then I do a profit split with the company. So I have to make more to get more. Um, so that, that all matters, you know? Um, so at first, you probably training at home, or um, so that's good. Then you, keep, you can keep the cost low, um, and, and yeah, from that point on, you could like yeah move move up if you if you want that. Uh, some people only want to trade from home. That's fine too. Uh, could be really handy if your kids at home or something, and then you don't have to leave and stuff like that. I, I get that. Um, so it, it's all personal, personal, and it kind of depends uh, what, what fits you. Uh, yeah. 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 No. Um. It makes makes uh, makes real good sense, and uh, uh, I think uh, S J that answers the question as well. Uh, instead of getting into the like, very specifics. Um. So. Uh. Uh. Let's see here. Uh. Natalia. Um. Oh, a bunch of questions coming in. So. Uh. Hold on a minute here. Yep. Uh. Suleiman. Okay. So these are more about comments. Um. Uh. Let's see here. Uh, Natalia about uh, gaps. Okay, so um, do you um, do you do you trade gaps? Do you look for um, you know um, uh, gaps to fill? Uh, yeah. Setting orders there, waiting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so there are two things you can do. You can like sell into the gap, uh, and then or, or or you can just buy settlement, right? So there, there are two different things. Um, I, I I like to to buy settlements or sell settlements when they test it, um, and I always try to sell or, or buy into a gap, um, but I'm not really good in at that. So um, yeah, still working on that I guess. Um, but I, I find that harder to do than just wait for the settlement to hit, and then either buy or sell if it comes from below or above, um, and, and do that. Um, but in essence, you can do both. But the thing is, like you have to. It's it's all uh, uh, um, mathematical. So if you if you with the ES at least, if you have a gap of more than 10, 15 points, then the chances of closing they they decrease uh, significantly. Um, but you can run a study on that. I mean, then you have the percentages. So you can kind of work with that. Um, but yeah, sure. Yeah, that that always works. Uh, Usually pretty good, yeah. Okay, okay, great. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, a lot of these comments here or questions that I think he's already answered. I think Roger Suleman, um, a, a bunch of them here. Um, Scott has a question here about high volume nodes. And this is a good question because um, uh, looking at the high volume nodes or even low volume nodes, um, how do you, I mean, do you just set your order there if you have a, already your bias from earlier? Um, or uh, do you um, start to uh, move that order 
uh, in relationship to what you see in the order flow um, around that area? Yeah, uh, good question. Well, I, I, I tend to watch if a level holds. Uh, there's always a pullback. Um, so I, I just wait for that and maybe have like a few ticks worse price. But then I at least know that at level at some point hold it. Um, sure, it can make a new low, of course, but um, I, I want to see it hold first and then I'll enter. Okay, so you look for a retest on it. Yeah, micro. <laughs> micro retest, like a, a little, a, like a tiny little double bottom, like like something yeah. like this, this right here, for example, somewhere like what's on the screen, or or down here, a triple little bottom, yeah, double bottom, like that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trade there, uh, get some volume in, and then and then hold. Yeah, that's what I would look for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I think that answers your question there, Scott. Um, uh, it, it's a great question because. Um, <laughs> We've seen it uh, so many times where we know that there's orders there. We know that there's traders interested in the low volume nodes or high volume nodes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the larger players know that too. And they'll yeah. spike those areas. Um, oh, yeah. They can, they can blow through it. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or spike it through and then just massive volume on the other side uh, to, yeah. to drive it away as quickly as they can. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, how do you handle uh, those kinds of situations? Um, you mean that I buy it and then they, they, they smack it down? Yeah. Oh, I stop out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Depends. if it goes fast, then I stop out. If they try to do it really slow, then I, then I like probably size down and then wait for that, that, that order that moves it down to fill. And usually when that gets, gets filled, they usually don't want to fill and then they, it tends to be the low of that move, so then I buy it back. But um, at least in the DAX, it works. It works pretty well. Uh, they, they, you, you usually see a lot of orders, like big orders, moving it down, and at some point it's getting filled, and that's it. That's the end of the move. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I look for that as well. But usually, um, I like to get out first and see how it reacts. Um, I, I kind of like to. Have a low, well, I try to have a low risk uh, profile, um, and you can always get in later. You know that does, yeah. And you're gonna miss trades, sure, but that's true. But and I'm probably pissed for a minute or two, but um, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I I hear you. I mean, like it, it. I mean, you have to take the risk. Um, yeah. And, and it depends on what what your strategy or method is. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that that's all you can do. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's a it's a fantastic answer. Um, let's see. Um, a few more questions, and then we'll call it to call it a day here, uh, sure. in a week. Um, let's see. Yeah. Suleiman uh, has asked a couple times, so I skipped over it here. Any strategies that you find particularly uh, on the Eurex or DAX, uh, which may not work um, on the ES or NQ? Um, huh. um, mm, not, 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 well, the DAX sometimes has like the really big orders trading. Uh, like usually in the book, there's like uh, 10 lots uh, per rule. Uh, but sometimes they, they put in like 100 lot or 150 or 200 lot. Um, and I always want to see how that plays out, and that usually gives a good move uh, when it fills. Um, you don't really have such setups in the S&P and NASDAQ. They also sometimes have big lots, but um, it, it trades different around it. Um, probably also because the book in the DAX is also like fairly empty, you know? Um, yeah. Those so those big orders can really move the market, yeah. Especially if at the lows, you know, if if you get like sometimes at the lows they throw they they offer a, a hundred fifty lot, and I'm like oh whoa, <laughs> then um, I'm paying attention and then I see when it's trading, and if it's traded then I want to buy it, but I don't want to see a new low after that. So if it's a new low then, yeah, I'm probably gonna say goodbye. Um, and uh, thanks for thanks for the, the effort, but um. Um, but often that gives you a really good move to the upside for at least 15 points. Um, so, so yeah, I do look for that, and that doesn't really occur in the NASDAQ and the S&P. 
Well, the, yeah. the Nasdaq sometimes Nasdaq sometimes has also a uh, hundred lots or uh, sometimes even uh, I think I saw uh, three hundred lots sometime, but um, y yeah, you don't see that often, and um, yeah, it trades a little different around that than than the, the DAX. Yeah, so that that's, yeah. I would say that will be a difference for the rest. Uh, well, the DAX is a little bit crazy; it moves a lot. Um, so, so that too is more volatile the whole throughout the whole day. Um, yeah, that, that's about it. I, I think. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, it make, makes makes really good sense. I mean, that thinner market, and then you see the bigger players. Like that's yeah. gonna that's a really big di difference. Uh, oh yeah. Between yeah. the two markets. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, S and P is so so thick. Um, but, uh, well, recently it hasn't been, but, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been funny. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, another question here. Um, uh, just, uh, more or less kind of your typical target and stop loss on the, on DAX or F DAX on DAX, uh, on the DAX, I usually have like a 10, 15 point stop, uh, that depends on, uh, uh, how good entry is. Um, and, well, I, I try to keep the sub tight, like before, like below lows and above highs. But recently, they stop me out and then turn around. So that doesn't really work. Um, so I'm still kind of looking for a way around that because sometimes it runs 20, 30 points or in a in a in a blink of the eye, and then I'm like, oh, okay, um, yeah. So then you're already your stop will be 10 point, and then run another 30 points. Well, if you can do the math, then you're down 1K without doing anything like uh, very wrong. So um, I want to prevent that. <laughs> um, but it's also annoying that they just take out your stop and, and turn around because, well, of course, they look for stops. That's what they do. Um, but the goal is not to be in that. So um, so that, that's it's a good question. But I'm still sometimes playing with it. And you also don't want to risk a lot every time. Um, like let's if I have like a two lot on in the in the DAX, then uh, ten points risk is five hundred euros, and um, yeah, some, depending on the, the the time of day and then how the market trades, I think ten points should be enough at that point uh, to see if you're right or wrong. But it depends on the structure of the market as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, we'll end uh, here with uh, Natalia. Um, she actually had a couple questions that I didn't cover. Uh, right. One was about just um, you know, kind of uh, overall like uh, um, uh, bias in the morning that you set up. I, I guess it, it sounds like it's mostly through your volume profile, um, yeah. and uh, um, and then looking at uh, maybe footprint and, and volume, um, and then and then book map. Um, and then yeah. the second question is um, your favorite setup and how often do you see it and trade it? Ah, <laughs> um, well, my my favorite setup is the is the is the retest is a, a retest of the volume um, a, after a bigger move. Um, by the way, we're moving up, right? Yep. <laughs> Seventy-five. Yeah, yeah but, exactly. Um, yeah, and they they're canceling the offers, so yeah. <laughs> um, so if you guys paid attention, you should have bought sixty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. I'm kidding. No, no, <laughs> but um, um, but yeah. So um, and now I forgot I was what I was saying. But um, about your favorite setup is the oh, pullback. Right. No, it, yeah, it's a pullback to the to the high volume, uh, or at least like the the volume point that where people were wrong. Um, mm -hmm. So if you want to get into a move, um, that's usually good good entry point to to go with the market instead of going against it. Uh, you can also fade the market, like if, you, if I probably would have. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know. If I wasn't in it. So 75 was a level of my. So the test to 75 on the last move after a down tick. Here. Was probably a setup. I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's easy to say now. It's I can see it working. So I was, yeah, I, I probably would have tried. You know, like probably probably. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah. So that that's one thing that I that probably did. So let me see the volume there. I mean, not a lot. The most volume was at uh, sixteen, at seventy three, seventy three three quarter. So that was the 
first move and then it up the, so I don't know if it did that well. So probably would have entered 73, 75. Then I was like, oh, it's, I'm happy. I'm go, it's going to 72.50. And then I probably won't be that happy at 75, the retest. But I, I, did, I did see the, the offer there, so that was good. So um, while my bias was still bullish, I, I probably, I don't really want to say that because it's easy to see now since it worked, but, but still, let's say I did try. And yeah, I still would have put my stop above the high. Um, and when it down ticked below the 75s, I, I would have stopped, would have put my stop to 75 uh, and scaled out probably 71, 71, 50 or something. And then uh, just let it, let it run. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably something like that. But yeah, I, I, it's it's always hard to, or too easy to say when you see the chart, you know. Um, right, right, and and especially too. I mean, like a, a you may take a, a shot at it, um, yeah. but uh, you you're you're done for the day. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, make makes sense. Um, yeah. But, um. Okay, well, uh, I think that uh, uh, that's everything. Uh, we, we answered all your questions here. Um, ah, you know, um, let me put into the um, uh, into the feed here. Uh, if you are guy, if you guys are interested um, in uh, reaching uh, Niels here, uh, more information. Uh, there it is. It's all in the uh, in the chat there. Um, so I gave you his uh, his website, uh, his Twitter handle there, uh, and then his affiliate link there. Uh, for book map. <laughs> so uh, you guys are all set with that. Um, and um, uh, well, any any uh, parting uh, uh, comments, um, uh, Niels? Or, uh, uh, you know, thank, um, you, thank you very much. Sure, yeah, you're welcome. No, well, um, when I start talking about it, I think it was trading at 67, right? So I said, like, yeah, so when it's trading, testing 66, 66, 65, I probably want to go long because the bias is long, right? Um, and it's a lower volume that's tested than previous uh, previous volume. And um, well, I, I can't comment on this one because I called it in real time, right? So uh, it, it did trade it higher. Uh, there was some offering at the 770 even. Um, so I probably would have scaled out just before that, like 69.50 or 75s. So, and then, Right now, um, they're, they're still offering in now, I see, like a little bit. I, I kind of don't want to give up too much, so my stop would be, let's say let's say if I got the 68s, right, something like that. I, I don't want to see it trading below 69. Yeah, yeah. So probably sense. just a, a break even stop on this on after the scale out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the exits, exits, Probably, well, if I had a three lot, then I would scale out 69, 50, and, or 75 ideally, but let's say 50, and uh, two points above that, so 71, 50. I'm not sure if you got a fill there, 71, 50. Yeah, you probably wouldn't have gotten filled there. No, you wouldn't have. No, let me, uh, let's see that. Um, no. I mean, just 43 traded up there. Oh yeah, that's nothing. Yeah, no, that that's not no. Yeah, yeah, you probably missed that one. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, just uh, just great stuff. Uh, um, you know that uh, to kind of bend bend your ear a little bit on uh, you know how how uh, you know a professional here uh, looks at it, integrates it with their higher time frame analysis. Uh, you're trading from the floor. Um, uh, uh, the costs involved. Um, uh, yeah. All sorts of great stuff here, Niels. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, no yeah. problem. All right. Well, we'll we'll do it again uh, sometime soon. And uh, uh, everybody, uh, every everyone, have a have a great uh, weekend. And um, uh, we'll catch up uh, next week. All right. Okay. Thanks, Niels. Yeah. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, guys. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye.